What's up guys, it's MAI here, and today we are taking a look at Dark Weezing. So, this is actually going to be a pretty interesting deck, because after playtesting with it a little bit, I realized that this deck is almost a tier 1 deck, with just the speed at which you can get damage out, and the ability to take KOs, the ability to recover, etc, etc. Um, this might be one of the fastest decks I've, I've played in terms of getting damage output out. So let's take a look at how that works. So Dark Weezing, 60 HP Dark Pokemon, stage 1 with 1 retreat. Weakness to Psychic is really the biggest weakness of the whole deck itself because there's so much Psychic weak Pokemon in the meta. Um, but the primary attack, Mass Explosion, is what we're looking at. So it says 20 damage times the total number of Coughings, Weezings, and Dark Weezings in play. And then you do 20 damage to each of those Pokemon. Coughing, Weezing, Dark Weezing. And you don't apply Weakness and Resistance. So, um... 20 times these gives you a theoretical max damage output of 80, right? Because you can only have four of each Pokemon in play at one at one time. You can only have four Coughings in play, and those evolve into Weezings. And so, so most people, when they build this deck, their max damage output is 80. They'll use Darkness Energy, though, because of the Dark Pokemon, to increase it to 90 and 100 and whatnot. But we have another way of boosting damage output, and that is to pair it with our friend Brock's Ninetales. So Brock's Ninetales, if you haven't seen my Brock's Ninetales videos, we've had two videos that showcase this card. Because of how versatile this card is, this is the third video we're showing because it's just that good. So Shapeshift is an ability that lets you put an evolution card on top of Brock's Ninetales at any given point in the match, and uh, that evolution card, and become you basically play as that evolution card. Now you can't use any Pokemon abilities or powers on that evolution card, but uh, you can use all their attacks, their weakness, resistance, HP, all that works, and um, things like you know stadiums that boost the damage or boost the HP of Dark Pokemon uh, works also with the uh, Brock's Nine Tails as well. So this is how we're gonna cheat the the attack. So. Before, we were stuck at a theoretical max of 80 damage because of uh, the number of coughings, wheezings. What you're, what you're going to do this in this time is going to be to get a uh, nine tails set up with four coughing on the bench, and you evolve nine tails into wheezing instead of the coughings into wheezing. So this allows you to basically cheat and gets you to have six total of Pokemon that mass explosion can da calculate damage off of and so that gives you a damage output of 120 if you get your whole field full of coughings wheezings and dark wheezings so 120 damage for two energy um and it's and this is a dark pokemon and so when you put a darkness energy on you're now into 130 damage, 140 damage. Like you can see how the one shot potential of this deck goes crazy. Not only that, but for somehow, based on my playtesting, we're we're consistently able to get three to four of these guys out. Um, the the nine tails really help. You know, we, I always go go for these early on, but then but you know we're usually able to get three or four out pretty quickly, and so that gives you a damage cap of 60 to 80. With darkness energy, it gets to like uh you know 70 and 90. So we're talking about 70, 90 damage within two turns because of the two energy uh, requirement here. It's it's nuts how fast this thing can set up. So that's the overall strategy. Let's go into the full deck. So Brock's Vulpix is the basic of the Nine Tails. Um, we're not gonna use we're not gonna be able to use Flame Quick Attack. We can use, but you're probably never gonna use it. It's a 40 HP one retreat. So he just needs to survive to get into Nine Tails. Brock's Nine Tails. We can't use Will O' Wisp, but he's 70 HP and has one retreat. The one retreat's really nice. Weakness to Water is relevant because there are some Water Pokemon in the format. So you want to evolve him into Dark Weezing as soon as you get him in play. Um, three Cleffa to get set up. Now you might think to yourself, well, running Cleffa seems counterintuitive because you want your bench full. You want, you want as many spots as possible for Weezings, but Cleffa is just too good not to play. Normally what happens is I get one Cleffa in play and I just keep using Eek and eventually they're going to KO the Cleffa and once he gets KO'd, I don't bother to get another one. I just play with what I got. Um, and then you can set up further beyond that. But three Cleffa is really nice for consistency to get set up early on. Um, he's a baby Pokemon, and so when the opponent tries to attack him 50% of the time, the attacks don't go through. So that helps to slow down the early turn so that you can get fully set up. Free Retreat as well, so that's really important. We do run a single copy of Umbreon. Uh, 
because it's nine tails we can become any evolution we want and so umbreon is a nice tech because we do run darkness energy so you will there is a really good chance you can get faint attack set up here so two dark and one colorless gives you a snipe of 30 if you're attacking the active though the the the, the uh, darkness energy will activate and will you can do 50 potentially 60 if you have three darkness energy on but usually you'll have you know two so 50 to the active which is a, it's a high amount of damage or 30 snipe the snipe is really important to take uh, important prizes you know to keep keep up tr with the race but the reason why i've chosen him to be a, a tech in this deck is because of psychic resistance so weezings you know they're weak to psychic most of the time against a psychic deck you're probably going to lose umbreon potentially gives you a fighting chance however the number one psychic deck in the format is dark gengar and he puts you to sleep and if he puts umbreon to sleep because you're only going to be able to get him in play via shapeshift and because shapeshift deactivates if it if uh, nine tails gets statused you lose umbreon and so you know you lose your tech and so against dark wheezing i mean or against dark gengar you're pretty much gonna lose it's just too hard to overcome so that's just something you have to accept but against like let's say uh, espion umbreon can potentially help you because of that psychic resistance and like i said we he can use the darkness energy that we have that we're already playing so there's no extra energy cards that we need to put into the deck to, to get use out of him. This is a good tech to have. The four Dark Weezing, so he does have another attack Stun Gas, although you, there's really no point in playing it because Mass Explosion is the important one. But anyway, Stun Gas, flip a coin if it has a friend point was not poison, if it's tail, if was not paralyzed. So 30 for if it's poison or 20 in paralysis. I mean, that's still pretty good to be fair, but like I said, most of the time you're just going to go for the one shot with mass explosion. But in the off chance that stun gas is viable, he's an option to, to think about. So, four coughing is the basic of dark wheezing. Uh, tackle is important because um, it does 10 damage for colorless, but if you attach a darkness energy, then tackle does 20. So if you're trying to finish off someone, if you have, if you just missed out on the KO, if, if their band activated and they were able to survive one turn, a tackle can finish them off. Or if in the, you know if you're desperate, you attach a darkness energy and then you have 20, and 20 is 20 can somewhat sometimes clean up a KO. Poison gas is also relevant. Um, flip a coin if it has was not poisoned. So if, it, if they do get poisoned, that's actually 30 for 2 energy, which is pretty good. But in general, what you're going to want to do is just keep him on the bench and then hopefully evolve him when the time comes. 12 grass energy and uh, 4 darkness energy is our energy counts. So 16 energy is pretty low, but because we're, our primary attack is a 2 energy attack, that's not too bad. Uh, the four darkness energy is very important because um, dark wheezing only ever needs one grass and so you're always going to be able to attach darkness energy to uh, dark wheezing or if you want to get embryon in play then darkness energy becomes relevant for faint attack so a uh, pretty good combination usually uh, you're always going to get a dark energy onto a wheezing and so this max explosion numbers are instead of being 20 40 60 it's 30 50 70 and 90 and 110 etc etc Going into the trainers, uh, we run two trader. We only run 16 Pokemon, and so having a heavy count of trader is not as important. So a two count is just enough to be able to get use out of them and not be, you know, clogging up the deck too much. Trader is uh, the the if you play the modern meta, then Pokemon Communication. Is, this this is the first print of it as Pokemon Trader allows you to change one Pokemon in your hand with one from the deck. Four Erica's kindness and uh, four transparent walls. So notice that there is an important clause with mass explosion. Is while you do heavy damage output, once you do the damage, this attack does 20 damage to each coughing, wheezing, and dark wheezing in play, even your own. So um, <laughs> that becomes important because you're hurting yourself while you're attacking, and this 20 damage applies to your active as well. So. This is a pretty important um, part of the attack. It sets you up for KOs, for revenge KOs, and it sets your bench up for KOs. Take note also that coughing only has 40 HP. So a dark two mass explosions will KO every coughing on your bench. So this is our way of fixing that problem. So Erica's kindness and transparent walls is a way of taking out the extra damage that the attack gives to our bench. So Erica's Kindness says remove two damage counters from each of your Pokemon with any damage counters on it, and then you do the same 
for um, your opponent as well. And if the Pokemon is just one damage card, you can remove it. So, uh, Mass Explosion, just 20 to all your Pokemon that are, um, you know, Coughing, Wheezing, Dark Wheezing. This removes 20, so it basically undoes a Mass Explosion on, for your bench. It's a very good card. Um, and then also for Transparent Walls. So you can even see how it actually has the Coughing in him, you know? So you can tell that this card is designed to be worked with Coughing, or sorry, Dark Wheezing. So, until the end of your opponent's next turn, prevent all damage from attacks done to your benched Pokemon and any other effects still happen. So, Transparent Walls just protects your bench. That means that the only damage that you take with Mass Explosion is just to the active Weezing that's attacking. This is also nice because uh, it says the end of your opponent's next turn, which means that in, in their turn after you do an attack, if they have a sniping attack, this will prevent that damage. So, Transparent Walls is really nice. Uh, and we have a four count to to be able to do mass explosion as often as possible. So, total of eight cards that allow us to mitigate the weakness of mass explosion. Then let's move on to the rest of the trainers. So, three double gust. It is Lysander for both you and your opponent. It's an important, very important card in the meta. It's usually a three count in every deck. Um, there is no switch card in the meta, and so double gust essentially becomes your pseudo switch. And because it's both it's Lysander for both you and your opponent, retreat cost becomes very important. Now, um, Dark Weezing has one retreat cost, Nine Tails has one retreat, Cleffa has zero retreat, and Umbreon has one retreat. So everything is one retreat. And so a double gust, you can use it pretty often. All you need is an energy in hand, and you can retreat anything that the opponent puts in the active. So three double gusts because uh, it's important to be able to take out their attackers before they become a real threat. And your damage output's high enough that you can actually take those attackers out very quickly. So, very important card. Four count of Goldberry. This is the healing card for the format. Uh, any At any given point, if you take 40 or more damage, then Goldberry activates and heals 40 damage, and then it discards itself. It's normally a tool that you can attach. So, in a deck where you're doing self-damage, Goldberry is obviously very important. Um... And a lot of times it can keep coughings in play for a lot longer than they otherwise would have stayed in play. So Goldberry is a very important card. It's a four count in this deck. For Professor Elm, this is your pseudo supporter for the format. There is no actual supporters for this format. So Elm acts like one. You shuffle your hand to your deck, then draw seven. Then you can't play any more trainer cards this turn. A four count because um, it's just too important of a card in the meta to keep things consistent, to get new hands and all that. The general rule is to use Cleffa's early game and then Elm's late game for to, to get the cards that you need to, to win the match. Two Rockets Hideout. This is a very important trainer, or a very, very important stadium, rather, because uh, Dark Weezing is a dark Pokemon, and so every Pokemon in play with Dark in its name gets 20 plus HP. This is in incredibly important because uh, if you didn't have the stadium, Dark Weezing, after a single mass explosion, usually only has 40 HP, which is very easy to KO. But with uh, Rocket's Hideout, you can turn this to 80 HP, and so after a Mass Explosion, you have 60 HP to, to play with. Most attacks in the format do 40 to 50 damage, and so Dark Weezing can potentially survive an extra turn for you to get a Gold Berry on him and heal him further with Erica's Kindness and all that. So, very important card, uh, very important stadium to, to keep in play to get Dark Weezing to a, a really respectable amount of HP to, to deal with. Moving on, we have three challenge. So challenge is a card that you normally don't see in many decks, but it's a very good card in this deck, particularly because uh, the way it works is basically uh, you you the opponent has the choice of either giving you two free cards to draw, or he can put anything he or she can put anything that uh, they want on their bench, and then you can put anything that you want on your bench from your deck. So. It's basically a setup card for both you and your opponent. So if they accept the challenge, then you then you don't draw the two cards. But if they decline the challenge, then you draw two cards. And so essentially this is bill when they decline, or it allows you to get all your Pokemon, all your basics in play if they accept. And so very good card because um, you know it's never a dead card. If you challenge and uh, your bench is full and their bench is full, then it automatically draws you two cards. It becomes a bill. It becomes a draw card. So it's never dead. It's very good. If you if they ever accept the challenge very early on, uh, you're usually gonna win because you get set up so fast. And it's pretty crazy how quickly you can get damage output with the challenge and on turn one. So very important card is a three count. 
Two Count of Garbage Run is the final card of the deck. Garbage Run is the modern version of Super Rod. This is the first print of that effect. You shuffle three energy cards or three Pokemon into your deck from your discard pile. And um, basically just gets your lines back, you know. Two Count is actually really thin. We ideally want a three count since our attack depends on the amount of Pokemon we have in play. But there's just not much space here. Potentially, you can find a sp spot if you really wanted to to increase this to three. So far, though, two count has worked out fine. So that's the deck. Um, it's a very, very good card. Um, I mean, I underestimated how good this combination would be between Ninetales and Weezing. But just from what I've playtested so far, your ability to do damage output is just really nice. I mean, they they take three, four turns to set up their attackers, and then you can one shot them and one shotting an attacker that they have spent three to four turns to evolve and energize is really just really powerful. Um, you can trade prizes very effectively. Umbreon allows you to snipe things on the bench in late game in case they decide to uh, try to stall you with babies. You know, faint attack doesn't have any of that. I mean, you can also double gust a, a Pokemon in the active and then faint attack a baby, and the baby rule doesn't activate if it's on the bench. So you take a free prize that way. I mean, I would say it's a borderline tier one with um, just the speed and the damage output that you can do. There's not many decks that can consistently do 100 plus damage, uh, even 90 damage, and this deck can do that. So um, against the, t the top decks, you know, like our, uh, against Riptide, we will basically auto win because they're weak to, to grass, right? And uh, against um, Typhlosion, you know, Arcanine will one-shot us, but our HP is is such that we will get KO'd anyway. But we have a chance to one-shot the Arcanine, so that's usually not the case. It's usually very hard to one-shot an Arcanine, but we can do that. So that's that's not very important. Uh, Gengar, obviously, we're going to struggle, but then every other deck, you know, we do pretty well. So, so yeah, I mean, definitely uh, try this deck out. It's, it's pretty crazy uh, how effective this combination works. I don't think I've seen anyone play this combination yet, so this might be the first time that it might the showcased I guess I don't know but anyway let's go on to the matches all right we got a match here against Growly so we get a free card and we actually get four basics in play but no way of changing our hands so that kind of sucks we'll start with the Vulpix the coughings are going to be more important we'll just bench them all for now and we get a f uh, okay I accidentally click no Yes, yes, I will accept the challenge. <laughs> Cleffa, and then Vol both Volpixes are in play, I think, so we're just going to do this. All right, so he basically saved us, because uh, <laughs> otherwise we would have not have gotten a way of getting a new hand. He's playing his uh, Kingdra deck, and we have no way of retreating, so... <laughs> I mean, we can double Gust, maybe, but they all have free retreat anyway, so we just end turn. Wow, that kind of sucks. He's also a water attacker, so Vulpix will be KO'd pretty quickly. Uh-huh. Hmm. I can at least retreat into Cleffa, and uh, let's do that. Let's retreat into Cleffa so that... His he doesn't get free eeks like you know forever. Now half of his eeks don't work, so we're gonna end turn that way. And because he hasn't really gotten anything beyond just getting energy in play so far, there's a breeder fields which is gonna definitely get some stuff for him in play, unless they're both tails. So that worked out for us. Plays double gust. So we just wasted our energy from last turn, so that sucks. Alright, um he's obviously gonna go for no, he's gonna go for fin slap. He elms to get the seven, okay. He just evolves a Seedra, so he's gonna go for bubble? Or no mud splash, of course, yeah. Alright. There's an Elm, so we can go ahead and put Rocket's Hideout in place since we don't need... I don't think he's playing any stadiums. And then we can Elm. So we're just going to have to put this in the active. And Eek, because that didn't help us. There's a Ninetales. 
and a trader and a challenge. The challenge will help us if we can recover what we just lost. Wait, there's there's still one coughing in the deck, so we can always get the coughing in play. He plays Breeder Fields. Again, both tails, so that helps us out again. Luckily, our slow start is being compared is being countered by his uh, tails flips. So, all right, we're gonna do this. We're going to put one energy on the nine tails, and uh, we could challenge and get. He can either give us a free. Let's do that. Let's challenge. So he can't use it, but then I get a free coughing, and then we can elm see if that'll help yeah we got a free coughing out of it cool all right now we elm or shape i think we elm for sure didn't get anything from that so now we eek and <laughs> didn't get anything from that wow two elms down i think yeah there is a challenge so it's become a bill at this point if, uh, assuming we don't lose any pokemon here Instead, he plays Double Gust, which will obviously kill Brock Ninetales. Well, no, maybe not really. Mud Splash does 60, so we're still alive after... Um, we are still technically alive here. He'll probably hit the... Yeah, he's going to hit this. So we can... Uh, we can Erica's Kindness. First, we'll challenge. So we'll challenge... We didn't really get anything from that challenge, unfortunately. So we can Erica's kindness to heal off everything and then just retreat. We could double gust and yeah, see, I don't want to keep this energy in play, so we're gonna double gust. We'll bring up a coffin. I can retreat to with the dark, get Cleffa in play. So we're going to Erica's Kindness and then Double Gust so that we can retreat something with the Dark Energy instead of losing a Grass. We'll bring up a Horsey. Attach the Dark here. Retreat into Cleffa. Fresh Cleffa. Attach a Gold Berry onto Ninetales and then Eek. And um, I'm guessing at this point, caught some some of the coughings are prized because we haven't run into. I can't. I can't even. I don't really remember running into one of them. But the other good news though is that we do have um, all of our Pokemon with no damage, so that worked out well. I'm gonna take this simply because I think a couple of them might be prized. We get a Nine Tails though, so that I guess it was worth it. Because now we can trade her. And then we do 100 damage from that, so that works out. Of course, he has to bring an attacker in the active to do that, and let's see if he does that. He's breeder fielding again, so this time he finally gets heads. He'll get a Kingdra, finally. I'm, I really wonder if he's going to double Gust to try to kill something or attack me directly, because he's played two double Gusts. We, I mean, statistically, I mean, his hand's 10, so maybe he has it, you know, but who knows. His deck is 22. All right, gets a Seedra instead of a Kingdra, so that's interesting. He is. He's going to attack with one of them. So we get a KO, so that works out. There's a Kingdra. And he attaches a full heal of the Kingdra, setting up Twister. All right. And we get a Tail, so that's cool. So um, we can challenge first. There's a Dark Weezing. So... All right, so now we can shapeshift into Dark Weezing. Attach a Grass. And then Trader the Ninetales for a Weezing as well. So Trader the Ninetales for a Weezing. So yeah, two of them were prized. That explains a lot. Okay, so we can go ahead and evolve one of these guys. So the question for Mud Splash is, again, so does 10 to the bench. All right, so that's not bad. He can't kill anything. They'll take a bunch of damage, but Erica's Kindness will fix that for us. So we're going to retreat into the Weezing and then Mass Explosion. And uh, we have 60 HP, so we should be okay unless he Twisters us. 50 plus 20 equals 70, so we still... Are okay even with uh, a twister. 
And we got another wheezing out, so that's good too. We, we one shot at this point, so he's going for it for the twister. I hope he doesn't get double heads, because then I then that would really screw me over. He plays Super Rod and got the Seedra back. Okay. Yeah, if he gets double heads here and takes out both energy, that would be that would be bad. <laughs> hmm. Did he just play uh he played Sabrina's Gaze? Okay. There's a lucky stadium. Uh oh. Lucky stadium means this one gets KO'd. Of course. Okay, um, the good news, though, is that, you know, it's fine, I think. So right now, what we can do is Erica's Kindness to heal off everyone. We'll attach a grass onto this Weezing. We can uh, Lucky Stadium. We'll go ahead and evolve another Coughing here. And um, we just eek. Because we're going to need the garbage run. So who have we lost so far? We've lost just Vulpix, Vulpix, Ninetales, Weezing. So that's okay. Um, we'll get Vulpix, Ninetales, Weezing back. And move forward based on that. Perfect. Right, we're going to do this. So Vulpix, Ninetales, Weezing. Okay. And then attach. So I'm doing 90 that right now. So I can just KO him. So let's do that instead. So we're going to do this. And then we're going to attach a gold berry to him. Lucky Stadium. Retreat into him. And transparent walls. And then mass explosion for a KO. All right, great. So we're back. Now, genetic memory means that he has, he has Mud Splash available. But transparent walls will protect my bench. Mud Splash is sturdy to the active. The berry will activate to knock it down to 10. So we're good. And then Erica will help me out as well. There's a nine tails. We need, we need that Vulpix that we shuffled back in. But doing 90 right now means that we one shot his highest HP Pokemon. So that's perfectly fine. He plays Old Rod and gets double head. I think he gets a free trainer. No, he gets a free Pokemon. Okay. So he does have genetic memory because of the Old Rod. But like I said, we play Transparent Walls, so it should be fine. He might evolve the benched one. Because this one's probably going to get KO'd. So he does bubble to try to paralyze me. Okay. So now we just do this onto the wheezing. And then uh, transparent walls again. Well, Lucky Stadium first. Transpa transparent walls. And then mass explosion for a KO. All right. So we're back on the prize lead now. So it's, it's starting to work out well. He's going to evolve to Seedra and Genetic Memory and Mud Splash, which does 30 to the active. And then I can Gold Berry to heal off most of that damage. We have no more Transparent Walls, unfortunately. But, uh, okay, so he plays Double Gust instead. So that's fine. I mean, whatever he brings up, he can KO something if he wanted to. That's fine. Plays Good Manners. Okay. He's definitely going to... Okay, no, he's just going to leave something reactive. Okay. I can double gust, but it's 90, and I'm doing... Yeah, I'm doing 90, so that's fine. Yeah, double gust. Okay. Go ahead and put one here to retreat into the second one. And then Lucky Stadium. There's a gold berry. I'll go, I'll go ahead and attach the gold berry. I'm going to save it. And he just resigns because I'm taking too long, I guess. So that's fine. Uh, you shouldn't resign because everyone has quests to do. So usually, usually people will finish a match so that the opponent can finish their quests and all that. But that's fine. Um, this was a good example of us to, performing the deck well. Even when we started slow, we were building up. We did 100 damage at one point and now consistently 90. That's very rare. And, uh, you know, it works out well in this case. So. Let's go on to the next one. All right, we got a rematch here against Growly. Start with the Coughing this time, so it's against the same deck. I don't think he plays any other deck except for Kingdra. Okay, uh, yeah, we'll take the challenge for sure. So we're gonna we're gonna need a uh, Cleffa first. Volpix looks like one of the Volpix is prized, and 
cough, coughing, coughing. One of the Vulpix and one of the coughings is prized. So we'll take another Cleffa then. Okay. So three coughing, uh, one Vulpix, one coughing is prized. All right, that's not bad. We can still do 90 damage if we get a dark energy. Starting with coughing does pretty much suck, but that's fine. We have a challenging hand too, so that gives us free cards, which we'll need, which we'll need to maybe get out of this dead hand. He retreats into Cleffa, and uh, now we challenge to get two free cards. There's a nine tails, so I think what I do is I go to the active first. I will. I'm not gonna play Rockatata because I know now he plays the Lucky Stadium. So we're just going to tackle him and do 10. Because I'm going to have to retreat him. Next turn I can evolve into Nine Tails and put a Grass onto the Cleffa, retreat, and hit, and hit him with an Eek. He played Challenge and Bill and Bill, so he just drew 6 cards to get to 11. Wow. Yep. It's okay, though. Um. Yeah, we'll take a prize because we know Coughing is prized. We're gonna do random ones, so let's do pick this one. Oh, great! That we <laughs> look at that e ESP right there. Gaze actually helps us because I think we would have needed it. So now we can actually um, start attacking. Interestingly enough, but no, no, no. We're gonna play this right. All right, he paralyzed me, which means I'm probably gonna have to evolve the active then. To heal him so I can retreat. So I can evolve in the active. And I can uh, evolve the nine tails. So I'm doing 60 plus 10 is 70. So that worked out well. We'll, bump, we'll put the stadium in play. We'll play transparent walls. And we'll mass explosion to take a KO. So our HP is down to 50, but if he bumps the stadium, it's 30. I don't think he can do 30 damage uh, next turn because he had no Seedras in play. So next turn, though, I'm going to retreat into Cleffa for sure. He plays uh, Old Rod Heads Heads to get a Seedra back. Wow. Old Rod is not nearly as good as Super Rod, to be honest. So. I think he might need to to maybe change that up. But we're going to attach a grass onto Cleffa. And then retreat into Cleffa. And uh, Eek. And we, I mean, this is expected. Eek never is not a guarantee. But um, we definitely do need to do this. Because our hand is just too dead. And we're not going to find a way to get out of it. He plays two more bills. I believe that should be all of his bills, right? Yeah, that's all of his bills. So he's crazy hand is up back to crazy again. I mean, that's fine though. We have a potential damage output of 90 if we can shapeshift the nine tails. He plays double gust, so I guess we're just gonna put the Seedra in the active because I know that he that's what he's gonna do. So that's fine. Um, I don't think he can kill me, you know, but. We can kill him if he doesn't paralyze us. So that was kind of weird. He plays... I guess he's playing Mud Splash, which would still... We, it misses the KO on us. And he actually got Tails on Seedra, I think. Yeah, Seedra Tails. So we didn't get the... Okay, he plays Breeder Fields to get a Seedra, though, for the Horsies. So that's fine. I, they, I guess he's bubbling me. That's what this is looking like. No, he plays Hyper Devolution to get to Horsey. What? To retreat? Because of Bubble? Okay, so he must not have had an energy? Or no, not, so he just has to match. So he can do Mud Splash. Okay, that's fine. Again, the Stadium, though, will keep us alive. However, we KO ourselves if we hit him with the Mass Explosion, which I think it's worth doing. Is it really worth the doing? Because we put a Cleffa in the active then. Where is his attack coming from next turn? He can bubble me. That's about it. I think it's still worth the doing. So we'll do this to the active. We'll transparent walls. 
and uh, we mass explosion for the, we get KO'd ourselves. There's a Erica's kindness. That's fine. So we're down to three prizes, which is you know which is cool. We free up our spot as well. So that was an involved one. So we need to get that coughing back. We actually drew one off the prizes too, so we should be fine there as well. All he can do this turn is bubble. There's an Igly buff and a Lucky Stadium. So luckily he got the Lucky Stadium one turn late. We were able to use our stadium to its full benefit to keep alive for one more turn. He's definitely going to bubble, I guess, or maybe he wants a new hand now that his hand's down to five. And he's lost two lines, so maybe it's worth it for him. Yeah, he's going to get one back. Yeah, he's you know, the Elm, so that means he's probably going to bubble. Maybe even Mud Splash, which if he Mud Splash, it KOs the Cleffa, which would suck. Yeah, he's Mud Splashing. Paralysis. Uh, hmm. All right, we're going to do this. We're going to do one Grass onto the Nine Tails. And Lucky Stadium for another Grass, okay. And then we just end turn. And he has to hit through a baby, so hopefully that will keep us alive. He can do genetic memory now for a mud splash. He's a double gust. We'll send the other one up. He would have to hyper devolve and then retreat and then evolve and you know all that shenanigans to do 60. So that still doesn't KO us. Mud splash now does it instead. So that's still only 60 though. Kindness. There's a okay, so that actually is the perfect top deck. Because we kindness, Erica's kindness. For first we lucky stadium. Alright, Erica's kindness. Um unfortunately I KO myself, but then I I KO his active as well. So it's my it should be worth it. So 80 plus 10 is 90. So we shape shift into the this guy. And uh mass explosion. Take a KO. There's a gold berry. And then we bring up a Cleffa. Probably should have brought up the one without the energy, but you know, too little, too late now. But we we've been keep we've been keeping up with them, trading prizes and all that, so that's good. It's three to two prizes. He has another genetic memory, which now um it still doesn't KO this these guys, but I really, really need an eek right now. I mean, our, we've been okay to not have, you know, our hand's been dead, but we've been able to top deck out of it. But at this point now, for sure, because now we've lost two Weezins and a Vulpix line. So this is getting to be a crunch time here. If we don't get something happening now, I think we he can easily over overwhelm us. All right, he puts a horsey down. He plays good manners. Okay. He ums. And he's going for genetic memory. Please get it, Tails. Come on. Yes. Okay, and we also top deck out of things. So, it's going to go ahead and attach a grass onto the coughing. And uh, we'll go ahead and elm. And lucky stadium. Didn't really get anything from this. We really need a. Uh, we're gonna have to play this again. So there's a there's a garbage run and a challenge, and a trader. So we have technically what we need, but the challenge is probably gonna deny it. So that you know it's fine. And we actually, I think we have a coughing in there, right? Yeah, we do. So we definitely need that coughing back because we have a dark energy in hand too. So we have a way of KOing him. But he has a focus ban. Okay, so that'll be that'll be bad. He plays heads on genetic memory, so that sucks. Takes a KO. And um Did he not hit something here? I don't understand. Okay, so we're gonna garbage run. The coughing, wheezing, and then wheezing, because that's all we really need. Okay. 
and uh, we challenge him, and he's going to deny it, but we're going to draw two cards. Yeah. We can Erica's Kindness, because we're going to need that. So we Kindness, okay. We can uh, trade the Cleffa for a Weezing, okay. Bench that onto him, put a Dark Energy on the Weezing, Gold Berry the Weezing, and then we Lucky Stadium first, didn't help, so we now we Elm. There's another Weezing. We can uh, go ahead and I think we're going to have to start attacking him. So we retreat into the Weezing. He's going to Twister me. Um, so what happens here? So I hit 20 on myself. Twister KOs me after that. So that's not good at all. I might have actually retreated too fast there. <sighs> that's really awful actually. Hit him to get to 70. Yeah, um, I forgot that Twister is going to KO me now because my stadium is, is, is the stadium is wrong. So that pretty much screwed us. Yeah, it really screwed us. Now, maybe um, the only way we can actually do something here is if uh, we, we get a dark energy and then we can uh, we can attach it to one of the coughings and then hit them for tackle to get to 20 to 90. Hope his band doesn't activate. That's our only out. He, he has heads on Lucky Stadium. Yeah, I, I really screwed up there. I should have I should have rolled it for a Cleffa. Try to see if I can't get out of a better hand or get out of a hand than that. All right, so he actually flipped everything. He got his twister off. Yeah. Damn. All right, put a cleffa up. We did get a dark. So that's our only out is to. But then, oh, okay, so. <laughs> Here's the here's the downside is um if I attach a dark onto him since he has 20 damage he'll take 10 30 to do the KO and then 40 and I lose that so I can't do that even so I'm forced to instead attach a grass onto the coughing and then lucky stadium rocket stadium now Flip, and then I can evolve, and then my turn. And I just hope he can't kill the Cleffa, because I couldn't have. I couldn't do the play I needed. I was one turn too late, because I took twenty damage, or I I would I just didn't have kindness in my hand. All right, so that that must seal the game. I think. Let me just take out a coughing in that game. GG. All right, so this rematch, he was able to get the best of us. Uh, I, I made a critical misplay, but maybe he could have double gusted me anyway. I still think that was the best play would have been to hold off one more turn, risk it with a baby flip, or force him to have a gust, and then uh, take a KO potentially. But um, it just so happened that in this match, our two plays um, were one turn too late. But that was still a good match. Uh, shows the power of Kingdra, and it shows that this deck is still pretty good because we were able to trade a lot of, like we took a bunch of KOs when we needed to. Kingdra is just really fast, so you know that's just that's just the way that deck works. But uh, let's go on to the next one. All right, we're gonna we have a match here against Hero One. Um, we have only one coughing, and I'm just gonna challenge him, see if he takes it. If he doesn't take it, then I get four free cards, but he's gonna take it, so that works out well. Okay. So I'm sure I'm helping him too, but so this will just be a match of one strategy versus another versus RNG versus RNG. So, or you know, we'll see how it goes, but uh, this will help me for sure to get set up. So we're gonna get this guy. Um, let's see. It looks like one of the other Vulpix is, is prized. One, two, three. So, Cleffa. I guess we're stuck with just this. Um, so all of our Weezings are okay, but one of the Vulpixes is prized. 
So we're going to attach this. First, we're going to challenge as well. Okay, so we're going to attach this here and uh, tackle. The interesting thing here, though, is that I can just uh, attack the active, assuming he doesn't retreat. Because I can evolve a Dark Weezing and then just hit him that way. He does retreat, though, so that means I'm going to go for my retreat as well. He has item lock. Oh, wow. Okay, shape shift into this. And then go into the active dark energy, the active. Um, he has item lock, so we're screwed, right? I probably should have actually waited a turn. I really should have waited a turn. So I'm going to retreat into the Cleffa and uh, end turn. Because the problem here is um, I need to get a Lysander for the Oddish. We'll attach this here. And then we're going to attach a Goldberry to this one. We're going to use up all of our items as often as we can. Because if he gets item lock set up, we're pretty much screwed. So, um, Rocket's Hideout, we're going to Evolve, and then Evolve, and um, attach a Grass to this one, and then Eek for the Double Gust and Energy, which is what we have. Nice. So, this next turn, I'm getting rid of that Oddish. So, I'm going to Double Gust. The Oddish. Okay. Attach this here to retreat into the third one. And then I Elm. No, I Goldberry something. No, I Elm. I Elm. And then I just Mass Explosion. I take a bunch of damage, but that's fine. There's an Elm. I can transparent walls and but then that's a waste. So I'm actually gonna retreat, I think. I'm gonna retreat into the Cleffa. Because I want to have the um can garbage run that in, but I'm gonna eek. So that was kind of a waste. I should have probably just uh elm there. And I think I missed my energy drop for that turn too, so that was dumb of me. But it'll be all right, I think, as long as that's gone. That's the bigger. That was the biggest threat, and that's gone, so that's fine. He's setting up his Pokemon. Um, I'll set up mine. Pretty standard. Okay, traders for Meganium. All right. So he's he's basically powered up. So he's, he might start attacking, but I guess he's. Uh, I'm gonna cancel that. Actually, I'm gonna attach this here. And um, I just Elm because I really wanted the uh, Eek. I need a, I need a, I need a, wh what's this, what's her face? <laughs> I need the one that heals 20 everywhere. Erica's Kindness. I'll attach this to here and this Eek again. There's Erica's Kindness, and there's the Transparent Walls. Now I would have just needed a Double Gust, but that's fine. The more we get set up, the better it is, so that's perfectly fine. Um, we'll do this here. We'll Erica's Kindness. And um, we're going to eat because I want a Double Gust now and an Energy. Instead, we have an Erica's Kindness, no Double Gust. We're going to have to wait for him to attack, start attacking then. We're doing uh, 110 damage, so do this on top of this one. Oh no, I attached to the wrong one. There's so many, I'm starting to lose track. Um, that's fine, we're just going to eek. That was dumb. But then maybe that's a free retreat in the past, who knows, whatever. We'll eek, still no double gust.
we'll attach the grass to the third one and then eek again still no double gust dude, dude did i lose them all or are they just prized all right he finally double gusts me and i can't see what has what so i'm just gonna do this one He picks the one that is a Vulpix. Okay, that's fine. Alright, so I woke up. So that's fine. I'm going to nightly garbage run. This, this, and this. Okay. And then I'm going to traitor this for the wheezing. Okay. I can shapeshift into this. Attach a dark to the third one. One, two, three. Okay. And then I transparent walls. And then I elm. And then I mass explosion for the KO. Okay. So that one's gone. We have a double gust in energy in case he tries to stall us. And he is trying to stall us. So we're going to... <sighs> Um, I could just kill myself in, in, in the attempt to kill him, and I think I'm going to do that. So double gust this guy up. Gain him. Um, yeah, he, he actually, yeah, I'm going to retreat into this one. Yeah, yeah, retreat into this one. Okay, transparent walls, I'll attach a grass onto the third one, the last one rather, over here. And then I mass explosion, and I put Clef in the active. Okay, so we've gotten rid of both of his ch of Meganiums. All he has is Ivysaurs waiting for Venusaurs. And all of his energies are now back down to normal. This is a gold berry, so that's fine. He plays double gust. We'll put the other one up. We're still do we're still one shot both of these guys unless he evolves to Venusaur right now. Okay, great. So we do this to this transparent walls, attach a gold berry to the active, and then flip. And mass explosion. There's a kindness. No double gust, but that's fine. There's a challenge. I think at this point we just mass explosion and go for the last two prizes. Mass explosion, that's fine. He starts, maybe he's trying to get reset up again. Okay, so he just resigns because I guess he had no way of recovering Pokemon. Maybe he thought he was too far behind. I'm not sure. But um, in any case, like we showcased the power of this deck pretty good. A single challenge gives us such a huge advantage because we're going to be much faster than they are. He, and we got rid of his uh, Oddish. I, I don't know if he ran the Vile Plume. Maybe he runs the other Vile Plume. I'm not sure, but I'm just glad I got rid of it when I had the chance. Because that was, if it was item lock, we would lose. Because our attack damages ourselves, and item lock will prevent us from healing that off or preventing that damage. And so we would basically lose within three turns if, if that was the case. So got lucky there. The The fact that we were able to one-shot 100 HP says a lot about the power of this deck and how we were able to do that in the very beginning of the matches. Like, it's crazy how strong this is. But... um. That's the deck. Uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll showcase some other decks in the future. But yeah, this is. I was surprised at how well this worked. To be honest, you know, like I maybe at, for some reason I might have thought that the the damage output, like us taking twenty every turn, was going to be hard. But no, because we have we have four four of Erica's kindness and transparent walls. We have eight turns to be able to take eight KOs. You know, and since we one shot usually, all we need is one of those to do that. So most of the time, it works out well. Um, I mean, we can even let ourselves get KO'd every here, you know, here or there. We can use gold berries to keep things alive. I mean, there's we have a lot of options, and so the damage that we take to ourselves can be managed well enough. But the fact that we one shot 100 HP Pokemon that takes quite a while to set up. Most Pokemon that have that kind of HP does take some time. So 
anyway, I've rambled on enough. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you liked what you're seeing, then you know, like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you think that there's ways to improve this deck or what else you want me to play, and I'll figure out a way to build it. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.